This is the voice of the report of the week. Signing on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone watching. Or listening, I guess. Because it could be either one. This is Report of the Week here, and we are now on the air. When is this being recorded? It is... 2.24 a.m. Wednesday. 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 I think it's, uh... August the 13th. Pretty sure. Pretty sure August the 13th. A Wednesday! Well, we're halfway through the week. Halfway through the week. Now, as you think of it, it could be a good thing or a bad thing or a neutral thing. You're halfway through the week, right? Sure, you're closer to the weekend, right? But for those people going to whatever, schools, universities, what have you. Oh, uh, it's one day closer, I guess, to uh, resumption of classes. I believe it's early in September for most. Or it could be neutral. It could be me. I don't, I don't care. Really, what day it is. Every day is the same in Review Bra's world, right? But what is important is the individual time. It's 2.25 a.m. So, it's raining. It is raining. I hope to get this uploaded a little earlier than normal. Uh, I do. I certainly do. Absolutely. Maybe I'll get this uploaded by like 6 p.m. 7 p.m. Might actually get this uh, VORW show uploaded first because the review... <laughs> the review that I'm planning on uploading... Number one, my backlog is diminishing because I haven't gotten a chance to film a review uh, in the past few days. But that doesn't matter, you could easily catch up, you know, which I will. I've got products literally lined up here. i got two frozen pizzas and the Twinkies, and I also want to review some um, pigs in a blanket. Are you familiar with what those are? So that's like uh, little, little mini you know, hot dogs, uh, hors d'oeuvres, right? Or, they're not really appetizers, they're more like hors d'oeuvres. I don't know if they do this anymore, I haven't been to one in a while, but sometimes, like, uh, at, at a fancy restaurant, or, like, at, at weddings or stuff, they'll bring out the little trays of, of hors d'oeuvres, and there's these little hot dogs, uh, mini, mini hot dogs, wrapped in, like, a, like a fluffy, right, crust. Now, yeah, look it up. <clears throat> I tried the best I could to, to, uh, explain, but I don't know if that shall suffice. But either way, it's a nice night. It is, it's... Raining, raining, raining steadily. We're supposed to get about two inches of rain, which, uh, you know, it's a substantial amount. Uh, considering. But, uh, it rains. Uh, uh, anyway, though, I might step out on the deck later and get a breath of fresh air. I always like the rain, anyways. So, uh, that's nice. Yeah, anyways, though, uh,. How are you all doing today? That's good to hear. Well, hope you're well. Hope you are well. If you're not well, don't worry. It'll get better. The weekend is slowly advancing. Closer. Day by day. And, uh, yeah, things will straighten themselves out. Well, anyways, how am I doing? I'm fine. Didn't do anything today. I literally did nothing. I, uh, well, I fell asleep at around, uh, 6, uh, yeah, 6 a.m. Woke up at, at 9 a.m., stayed up for an hour, and listened to shortwave, because I never get a chance to listen to the, the radio at 9 a.m. So I did, I picked up, uh, a new station. Well, of course, I've heard it before, but I picked it up here. It's called KBS World Radio. That's from South Korea. No, all I gotta do is hear North Korea, and, uh, then I got the Korean Peninsula covered. But, uh, listened to that for an hour, then I went back to sleep and woke up at, uh, 3, I think it was 3, around 3, maybe 3.30. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I actually woke up at 5. I don't know what I'm, why I'm sleeping so long, almost, you know, 10 hours. 11 hours, pretty much, 10, 11 hours. I'm not growing, I'm done with that. I'm short. Well, not, not incredibly short, I'm just a little shorter than normal. I don't care. So who knows why I'm sleeping so long. 
Yeah, well, I don't know. So I woke up. I have three. Uh, had dinner, and now I've, and I've just been sitting on the computer. Uh, this is the first day in a very long time that I didn't even put on a, a shirt and tie. I just stayed in my, I suppose, sleepwear. Uh, it, didn't, it just didn't occur to me to, to get dressed today. So I didn't. Tomorrow, of course, I will. But uh, today, it just didn't occur to me. Maybe I was just too exhausted after the day's events beforehand. Whatever it may be, whatever it may be, we're here. Heck, we are. I'm in better spirits. May not sound, but well, I think I do. I think I sound a little more upbeat. Hopefully, than the last time. But here I sit. I'm in the other room once again, so I don't have the computer here. I'm just sitting, staring at the wall, telling my case. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking to like some sort of whatever doctor or something, you know, where you're sitting there, where you're laying down, and just staring at the ceiling or at the wall or whatever. I've never been in this situation, so I really can't say from first-hand accounts, but when you're laying there on the sofa and you're staring at the ceiling and you're talking to the doctor or whatever, that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. But, uh, don't ask me why. Oh, where were we? So, other than that, a day wasted. Of course, I said in the previous VORW show, well, I made a big case out of it too, bigger than I should have, that's for sure. I should have should never even brought it up. But, uh, you know, I did. Maybe it's good that I did, maybe it isn't. It is what it is. There's no turning back now. So, uh, yeah, what, what happened? What happened, uh, lecturer? What happened? What, uh, what brought you right to the hospital? You said in the beginning of the other Trivial W show. You said, "Oh yeah, uh, I, I didn't go to the dentist. Uh, I went to the, the hospital instead." Oh, what happened? What happened? What, what what's going on? Are you lying to us now? Did you not even go to the hospital? No, no, I, I went to the hospital. So I was switching chairs. I'm sitting in a more comfortable one now. Where shall we put the microphone? Maybe this is a good place for it. Yeah, it's good. It's a swivel chair. So, you know, what happened? Well, this tale, I don't know how many minutes of the show shall elapse. It, if it takes up the whole, well, it won't take up the whole thing, but if it takes up the majority of it, well, then it takes up the majority of the show, you know? It is what it is. You could always skip past it if you feel a need to. What I'd ought to do, really, is, uh, like the description or something, go through the show and, uh, Label the different parts of it. I could say introduction at certain certain minutes, fan mail, certain minutes, this part here, this part there, and people would just skip through it. But uh, man, I feel I would discourage uh, listenership. Really, I'll be saying, you know what? Who cares about the show? Just pick and choose what you want. And I don't, I don't really like that. You know, I don't know if I'll do that. Just a just a thought. Well, but anyways, so this tale that I'm about to tell you is a tale of decision-making. It reinforces the point that every day could be your last. And it also demonstrates the extreme, extreme incompetence of some in dire situations. Anyway. So if you could lend in here. Number one, is the person dead? No, the person's still alive. So then what's your excuse? Excuse for what? Anyway. So how does it start out? Well, let's uh guess can't say flash forward, I guess flash back to you. It's two days ago now. Since it's the next day, it's a new day. I guess the eleventh, right? I guess yeah. Today was the twelfth. I guess now it's the thirteenth. 
Pardon me if the dates are wrong, but I think it's the 11th. Flashback to the 11th, right? I'm sitting there sleeping on the couch, as I normally do. That's how I spend the days. I was sitting there on the couch, sleeping, and I get a phone call. Now, listen, I'll be honest with you, okay? When the phone rings, I don't, I really don't answer it. Uh, I know it's irresponsible, but I only normally, maybe it's my, maybe it's paranoia, I don't know, but I normally just answer the phone uh, from people I know, right? Uh, or if someone continuously calls back, you know, you know, I'll assume it's important, right? Most of the time, I just let the phone ring out. I don't hang up on anyone. I don't do that. I don't go that far, but I normally just let it ring out. Uh, also, sometimes, you know, I, I realize, actually, I'm a heavy, heavier sleeper than what I thought I was. So I might have slept through a few phone calls when the phone rings here or there. Sleep through it. But anyway. So. Around 3.30 get a phone call, right, from uh, one of the folks, and they say, uh, it's actually from, uh, I guess it's, uh, yeah, I guess from someone I know, one of the relatives, they said, uh, you know, listen, you're gonna need to be uh, awake and dressed, uh, something happened, and I thought to myself, oh great, what, <laughs> you know, and what now? Figured to get the dentist, and now, now what? You know. And uh, they said you're uh, you know, ninety-two year old, almost ninety-three, ninety-two year old uh, grandmother. I guess she was at uh, she goes to the you know, senior center uh, to get lunch, and then she could social socialize with other people, you know, other seniors and what have you. Uh, she was there that afternoon, and. Uh, I guess she was going up the stairs or something, she, uh, fell, hit her head, right, big gash at the bridge of the nose, you know, a lot of blood, and, uh, they said, uh, you know, we, uh, really don't have any transportation, uh, to get her, you know, they, they weren't gonna send her to the hospital or anything, uh, just to get her to, like, a local doctor or something. So, uh, someone else was coming up, but they didn't know where the place was, and, uh, they needed directions, so, uh, the person arrived at, at my place, I got in the car, and, uh, I had to pretty much give the, the driver directions to, uh, pick her up and get her to a doctor, so, uh, we go over there, you know, uh, yeah, it has, like, some tissues or whatever, covering up her wound, I guess, for her noses, you know, blood all over her shirt and stuff, I guess a blouse, right? Uh, but, you know, she's in, she's in good spirits, so, uh, go to the doctor, right, and, uh, they say, uh, well, they didn't do jack, really. Went to the doctor, they, uh, put a bandage on it, and they said, uh, alright, you're gonna need to get, uh, at least two stitches, uh, they said, we can't help you here, but, uh, go to an urgent care facility, that's what they said. Urgent care, at least over here, it's kind of like a, a clinic, right, type thing. They said, go to an urgent care facility, they'll take care of you. And, uh, you know, they charged her, I think, like, 300 bucks for, to wipe the blood off and put a band-aid on, and I thought that was absolutely outrageous. But, uh, you know, that's healthcare today. But anyways, so, uh, they say, alright, uh, you know, she's got to go to an urgent care place right away. Uh, so we pay the bill, you know, and get back in the car, and uh, the driver, and this is where, this is where extreme incompetence comes in, you know what the driver was doing, oh no, I can't, uh, oh no, I, I can't take you to the urgent care place, I have a dog at home, and I thought to myself, what's your, I don't know, what's your problem, you know, you've had a dog for years, you know, your pet's gonna be fine if you're gone for an extra 30 minutes. You know, you've been gone for literally hours at a time. Your dog's gonna be fine. Why don't you just take her to the place? Oh, no, my dog, my dog, this and that. And, uh... So, don't you think she... She says, I can't do this. Drives her back to my place and just drops her off there and, and drives away. So... I, I wasn't able to get her anywhere. 
so she's there, she's still bleeding. And of course, think about it, you know, she's almost 93 years old, an injured person. Number one, a fall at that age could be deadly. Uh, and number two at that age, uh, blood loss is also an issue. There could have been uh, hemorrhaging, right? Uh, because she once again hit her head. Uh, so that's a very, very dangerous thing. And the driver just, you know, drops her off and leaves her there. So we have to get to that, you know, urgent care facility. There's no, there's no transportation. So we're stuck here, right? She's still losing blood. Uh, so, when I do, I look up the, uh, the number of the, the urgent care place they recommended. And, uh, I call them up, number one, to see, you know, some places actually offer, uh, you know, ambulance services or what have you. Well, they didn't. And then I asked, uh, you know, do you offer stitches there? They said, uh, no. No, we don't. So I thought to myself, what the, you know, what the hell were those guys at the doctor saying? Oh, go there, they'll give you stitches. They, did, they didn't do anything. They said, no, we don't offer stitches. You know, if you need them, you gotta go to the hospital for that. <sighs> Boy. So... Uh, by now, like, three hours has elapsed, right? Still still bleeding at the nostrils. The uh, wound at the bridge of the nose pretty much, uh, I guess, stopped. It was, you know, once again, once again bandaged up. But there was blood still coming out of the nostrils. And, uh... So, well, what are you going to do now, right? Clearly, once again, at that age... There's only a limited number of options. You could really either A, wait it out, or B, go to the hospital. Uh, and I consulted various parties, the majority of which said, you know, get her to the hospital. Uh, the other one said, no, 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 if you take her to the hospital at that age, she'll die there, you know, this and that. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, the hospital could be dangerous for someone of that age, but it's a risk I'll, I'll be willing to take. Okay. Now, mind you that while well, she was injured, her injury didn't necessarily warrant. I mean, I suppose it could get away with it, but it didn't necessarily warrant a nine one one call. Uh, and doing so, of course, if it came down to it, uh, you'd have no other option to do so. You know, she'd have to get to the hospital some way, right? But it didn't warrant one. And uh, it would just be an unnecessary use of the services at this point. So, we managed to get uh, a ride to the hospital. Well, from who? Who, uh, you know, who gave her a ride to the, the hospital? Well, uh, you know, there's a few people in this world, you might, be, you might know a few of them, who literally do anything, anything for money. And this person was one of them. All you need to say is, oh, make it worth your while, and the person will do anything. So we finally managed to get a hold of someone. We said, listen, we'll, uh, we'll pay you. We just need a ride to the hospital. I don't you think the person was over here? Loaded her up into the car. And I was faced with another uh, choice. I figured, well, listen, you know, she's on her way to the hospital. It's not my problem anymore. You know. I could go in and screw around on the computer for the night, like I normally do. You know, or I could get involved and, and go to the hospital with her. So that's a decision now you're faced at this point, right? What are you going to do? You're going to go to the hospital, or you're going to stay at home, you know. You figure, well, it's in their hands now, right? What are you going to do? But for whatever reason, I decided to go to the hospital with her. So I got it in the back seat, and I said to the driver, you mind if I come? And he said, no, no, get in. So I went to the hospital, drove over. We go into the emergency room. First thing you gotta do is you gotta sign in at the front desk. Then you gotta sit in the chair and wait for the doc, wait for an available doctor or nurse. So uh, once again, the uh, the healthcare system today, we we're stuck in the emergency room. I guess <laughs> waiting room, right? For uh, oh, I'd say two hours before we even got any service. Right? Two hours. Finally. Uh, I guess they call her name up, right? I go to the back. I, I go into the emergency room with her. They, they set her into a, uh, I guess, a bed, a hospital bed, right? They were literally, I guess, they were full that night. Who knows what happened, you know? But uh, 
I mean, they had beds in the hallway and what have you. And uh, They got her into a, a bed, right? They, uh, you know, did various tests. What have you. They, uh, once again, when she fell, she uh, fell flat on her face, you know. Hit the forehead, hit the nose, uh, twisted the ankle, and scraped the knee. So, you know, clearly the whole deal, right? It, and, uh, you know, at 92 years old, obviously the bones are, you know, I suppose more fragile, right? She wasn't even in pain, though. She wasn't even complaining about it. But, uh... First, they had to take x-rays of the, uh... Well, first they had to, uh... Give her antibiotics in a... A shot. So anything, you know, nothing got infected. Then they, uh... Well, then they had to go in and, uh, get an x-ray of the ankle. Which they said was sprains. There wasn't any problem there. Then finally, the important part, they had to uh, really tend to the nose, right, and the forehead and the, the head, right? That's where the bleeding was coming from. That's where the main you know, focal point of the injury was. So they uh, had to do a CAT scan, CT scan of it. And uh, you know, the results came in. They... Uh, they found that the nose was broken. There was a, a pretty deep gash right there in the uh, bridge of the nose. So they had to, uh, they weren't able to give stitches. They had to put in like some sort of glue right in there. But the nose was completely smashed, completely broken. She didn't even, she didn't even care, you know. She was literally the entire time in the emergency room there choking around, you know. I mean, uh, good for her for, for holding out and all, but, uh. Yeah, broken nose. Uh, I mean, lost a good deal of blood, but they said it didn't need didn't need any sort of transfusion or anything. <sighs> but but you know that was that was that. She was there the whole time, making stupid comments and all sorts of stuff <laughs> that I can't even I can't repeat on this show. But I got a good laugh out of half of them. But. Uh, what I decided, I, one of the reasons why I decided to, to tag along right to the hospital, I figured, oh, it was just a fall, you're broken nose, so what, right? I could, I could understand your, your uh, justification for that. I could. You know, why'd you waste your time? You could have gone on the, uh, you know, you could have stayed home and screwed around on the computer. Why'd you waste your time and go with it in the hospital, right? Uh, well, for a number of reasons. Number one, I thought it was the right thing to do. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it wasn't. It was just a waste of my time, but I, I I still believe that it was the right thing to do. Likewise, I understood that yes, you know, being at the hospital, especially at that age, could be a uh, you know a stressful experience, right? So need to be someone there, right, to keep conversation with her and really try to 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 keep her distracted, right? So that she couldn't really dwell on where she was and what was going on. Right, said was also there to, to suppose moral support. Right. Anyway, so they patched her up. I was there at the hospital for a total of about eight hours. Right, six hours in the emergency room, two hours in the waiting room. We went to the hospital at around. Uh, went to the hospital at around, I'd say, seven seven p.m. Got out of there at around 3 a.m. So I was there for a while. When she got patched up, they uh, they gave her a little cane also to uh, to you. She didn't she didn't need it, right? But just because of the sprained ankle, you know, I guess just in case. Then she's got to take some antibiotics every day. I figure now though, she's doing all right, you know. She's more actually concerned about. It. She got two black eyes out of it. Also, so she's more concerned actually about appearing in public with the black eyes than anything else, which I found found kind of humorous. But uh, yeah, it's about that. She's doing fine. Said she has to see a specialist about the the broken nose, but they fixed it up as well as they could. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And I was still surprised, you know, eight hours later, we went back into the waiting room, which was now completely empty. I mean, when we got there, the the, the waiting room, it was literally standing room only, pretty much. Uh, and thankfully, I actually brought a book with me. I brought a book, went to a vending machine, and actually bought a monster there at the hospital. 
So I drank my monster and read my book, and uh, I passed the time. Also passed the time when I was sitting there and, uh, you know, waiting for whatever, waiting for the x-rays, the CAT scan, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was about that. Right. Wouldn't you think, though, what really surprised me, I figured, you know, that driver that, that took us over there, there's no way in hell, you know, she would wait in the waiting room for, you know, eight hours for us. But don't you think, when we when we went back into that waiting room, when everything was done at 3 a.m., she was the only person still in there. Where the hell have you people been? It's the first thing out of her mouth. But, um, you know, we paid her, all right. It was worth her while sitting there. She made... That was a good, good chunk of change off of us. That's for sure. Would have been better to just call a cab. You know what? It would have been about 20 bucks to get from the hospital to home. We paid about five times that amount. You know, but hey. Gotta do what you gotta do. Once again, we'll do anything for money. So that's that. Now she's she's at her place. right? So you're telling me she's, uh, she's doing all right? Yeah, she's fine. Absolutely fine. I checked in on her. As did other people. While I was at the hospital, of course, I had to call a plethora of people. It's the first time I used my cell phone in about, I'd say, well, the entire year, actually. I haven't picked up my cell phone since 2013. It's the first time using my cell phone, and no, it's not a smartphone. It's like one of those Nokia phones from, like, 2004 uh, that you could just call on. I figured, why do I need a smartphone, right? Why do I want to be one of those people looking at it every five seconds? Well, I never got one, and nor do I plan to get one, but, uh... I had to call a plethora of people up, reassure them, let her know she's at the right place, right? I <laughs> bet, you know? What can I say? At least it's it's good, you know? Life experience, right? Good real-world experience. Yeah, I guess assuming responsibility, that's one thing. Uh... And also just being there, seeing how things work and what have you. <laughs> There's one remark that really got me laughing, but I can't, I can't repeat it on this show. <laughs> Boy. I swear, though, even while she was there, the whole time she was joking around after the nurses and doctors and all that stuff. Yeah, but uh, she held out. She made it. You know, there's some people her age who, uh, who knows how they'd react. I suppose turned out a lot worse, but I mean, she held her composure and I yeah, made it. She's fine. I'm alright. Eventful day, more than I would have liked, of course. But You don't know what life's gonna throw at you. Right? And that's why I reinforce the point, saying, live every day as if it is your last. Right? Because you don't know what is going to happen. You think when she woke up that morning, alright, sure, listen, she, you know, she's a senior citizen, but anyone, regardless of age, can trip on concrete stairs and smash your nose. Could happen to anyone of any age. Okay. You know, you don't wake up in the morning and if you could see yourself 12 hours in the future, right, you wouldn't expect to see yourself sitting there in a hospital bed. It could happen. You gotta be prepared for everything and anything. You just gotta enjoy life and you gotta live it to the fullest because unfortunately you don't know what the future holds for you. And that is the truth. And once again, that lesson was reinforced it was reinforced. But, uh... There's my story. Oh, well, thanks for wasting my time. No problem, any time. That's why, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm here for. I don't know, I just felt it, would, it reinforced a good amount of points. And there's also something to tell, right? Something to say. Something to tell, something to say, something to do. 2.53... A.M. The rain is still falling. Still falling. Rain's picking up. Oh well. I like the rain. It's it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not at all. Well, how many minutes have we killed here? I could have talked about something better, right? Half the show. I'm sorry for, for wasting your time with that story. Yeah. Hopefully someone got something out of it. But, uh... You know, there's no way I'm gonna edit out 30 minutes of this show. 
Well, I hope someone got something out of it. Likewise, on a note, I, uh, someone uh, mentioned about the dentist. <laughs> Actually, a few people did. Uh, did I reschedule the appointment? I did not. No. I figure, you know, what, what, you know? They've kept me, I've kept them a year, right? An entire year. What's one more day going to do? So, I'll reschedule it when it, when it gets rescheduled. Um, just got to, got to grin and bear it. I suppose if that phrase holds applicable. If I wish, I suppose I could, I could try and imagine, right, going to the dentist and getting this painful procedure and whatever. I guess I could think of it as reconciliation for for whatever, for for being here, right, for all the stuff I've done, <laughs> you know, gotta face the music, right, guess you could think of it as that, that's a terrible way to think of it, really, you gotta just think of it as going to the dentist and, you know, learning a lesson for, I don't know, for having poor teeth. And they tell me, you know, and if they tell me, I don't, I don't know. If, they, if I go there and they say, oh, I have seven more cavities, I say, you know, like, don't make a case out of it, just get it done. I really don't like when people make a case out of things. I figure just keep it, keep it low key, you know, just get it done. I don't want to be the center of attention, you know. Likewise, I, I was thinking about it and I figured, you know, what, what if? What if the same thing happened to me? You know, what if I was somewhere, let's say I was out buying energy drinks, right? And I tripped on the steps and broke my nose, right? You know, what would happen to me? You think someone would do the same thing for me? Oh, hell no. No, no one would care. You know, that's the truth. You know, if by chance I even, you know, got to the emergency room. Well, number one, no one would, would be there anyways, but... Uh, number two, I wouldn't want anyone there, you know? While I was laying, you know, while I was sitting there actually in a chair in the emergency room, you could see, yeah, the little curtains separating the, the beds, but uh, you could see nearly everyone else had someone with them, but I don't know, I thought, you know, why do I want someone there? I'd rather lay there, you know, by myself. Number one, I wouldn't want anyone to see me like that anyways. Uh, but number two, I don't know, I just wouldn't, wouldn't want that. That's just me. That's just me thinking. No, truly, if I fell and, and broke my nose, well, I don't know if there's anything you really can do. You know, the main issue with her when she fell, it was, it was her age, you know? I mean, most people don't even, unfortunately, get to live to be in their 90s, and I don't think I'm any exception to that. Uh, but, so number one, that's an accomplishment in their, in, in their self, right? And number two, when something happens to someone that old, you really have to take care of it. So what would happen if I fell and broke my nose? I don't know if there's anything you can do, really. I'd probably just bandage it up. I would just see a doctor. Now, I suppose if stitches and what have you were needed, then of course I'd have to take the appropriate action. Uh, but otherwise, you just you know, I had to deal with it. <sighs> well, what are you going to do? It's the truth. When you go for all this stuff, when you get it done, when you go out of your way to take care of someone and all that, you, you can't expect anything in return because chances are you'll get nothing, you know? But then again, do you really want anything, right? Let's go down and read some fan mail. Don't have any of the lights on down here. We're sitting in the dark. Sitting in the dark. We're in the dark. Oh, we got the computer screen on. That's that's important. So what station are we gonna listen to today? Yeah, how about this one? It's called Trans World Radio. Anyways, let's read some fan mail. We got a lot of it. Get to the last letter. The report of the week. Tomorrow, August 13th, 2014, is my 23rd birthday. I'm old. <laughs> that would really make my birthday if you could give me, not a shout out, but just tell me something. 
Anything of your choosing. Thanks for keeping me entertained since 2011. Well, Adam, number one, thank you for sticking around so much since, uh, really, 2011. I, you know, I know some people say, you know, oh, yeah, I've been around for so many years, and, you know, while name, you know, some names are familiar, some names aren't, but your name certainly is familiar. Uh, you know, you've been, uh, you've been sticking around for, for quite some time, and I thank you, number one, for, for just being around. You know, so many people just, uh, you know, are here for, like, a week or so, and then they forget about it. Uh, so, number one, you know, just to even remember this channel and stick around for so many years I feel that's an accomplishment in itself so number one thank you for sticking around and number two uh, you know you always uh, when you do write to me you always write number one very nice uh, but also worthwhile remarks uh, you've given me advice in the past and I really do thank you for that you know likewise well it's your birthday right 23 years old now that's a fine age. Don't say you're old. Not at all. Not at all. When you're in your 20s, you're still young. You know, you got... You're still in your prime. You got... <laughs> well, assuming. Right. Good physical health. So you're fine. You're not old. Right? You're not really ever old. It's just your perception of age. Yeah, you, know, you could say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm 18 years old, I'm so old. You could say, I'm 55 years old, I'm so old, I'm 75 years old, I'm so old. You know, it just depends on how you could really perceive your age to be. You know, there's people who are like 85 years old who could still, you know, go to the gym and work out. It just depends really on how you maintain your physical health. And that's how you could really determine if you're, you're old or not, right? But, uh, no, you're not old. And, uh, I don't know, I just want to wish you a, uh, a very happy birthday. And, uh... And also thank you for just, uh, you know, for being around, uh, sticking around, and, and just for being there. And, uh, you know, happy birthday. Really, thank you also. I made it a priority to read that one first. Even though it's not one of the first letters, I made it po a point, I suppose, to read it first. I think that's acceptable. I think that is. The person who ran your Twitter, who you were calling an imposter, might have just been updating people on your videos. Since you didn't have a presence there, they might have just been doing you a service. I replied to him, I said I respectfully disagree, you know, this and that. The person said, alright. My dear review bra, enclosed our instructions on body animification. I hope your transformation runs smoothly. Important notice. Before beginning, make sure all equipment has been sterilized in Gordon's gin, okay? You may require an assistant if you want the results to look less sloppy, but all instructions are possible to do solo. Bear in mind, your suits may require alterations after operation. Alright, so everyone listen up. Uh, if you want to turn yourself into a blue jay or an orca, listen up. This guy's going to give completely legitimate and true instructions that have been proven to work in the past. So let's listen up. Blue Jay. Equipment. Staple gun. Hacksaw. Stanley blade. Iron to cauterize wounds. Plunger. A cow skin shaved and painted black and blue. Before starting spray paint your entire body blue. Okay. Before starting spray paint your entire body blue. Begin by separating your legs at the knees. Cut off your feet and attach to the end of your leg stumps. Remove skin off feet and amputate two toes. Sharpen the remaining skinless toes to make into bird feet. Take the severed legs from earlier and staple to face, one on top of the other like a beak. Now take the cow skin and staple to back and forearms. Finally, use a plunger to collapse, well, your anus in on itself. Decorate this with your teeth to create a flamboyant tail. Congratulations, you are now a blue jay. <laughs> Gladly, I'll, uh, I'll do that right away. <laughs> oh, God. Can't even imagine actually doing that. Orca. Use sandpaper to remove all trace of hair from body and leave one layer of smooth skin attached. Prepare a bath full of tar and dive in. 
making sure you coat the whole body. Remove genitals and then staple your, staple your legs together. And break the feet at a 90 degree angle to create a back fin. Now staple the upper arms to a torso. Take a parasol blade, painted black, and weld it to your spine. Finally elongate face using a cheese grater. Now swim, you beautiful whale. Best wishes, Orca Man. Well, that's a very, uh, very, very willing, thoughtful, and important advice. That's how it's done, people. Um, hopefully, uh, you won't die of blood loss or anything, but uh, this sounds, uh, sounds like it'll work. So I'll try that right away. And dear review, bro. First, I'd like to say how much I love your VORW show. It's very relaxing to listen to while I take a warm bath each night. I was wondering if I it could bother you for some advice. Seeing as you are a gentleman, I thought you'd be insightful in a situation I am currently involved in. Oh, sure. Well, I can't guarantee you I have any advice, but I'll definitely lend an ear. About one week ago, I was extended an invitation to a party hosted by some kids at my school. I heard through the grapevine that the host's parents will most likely not be there. Ah, yes, a classic, right? Uh, if I presume high school, right? I don't think the middle schoolers are doing this anymore, at least at this point, but you know, the classic high school party, right? We've all heard of those, of course. I'm not the type to have ever been to one. Uh, but of course, you hear all about them. Oh, you go to so-and-so's, whatever, isn't that? If this is the case, I know that there would be a strong chance that there would be underage drinking involved. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I would normally not go. However, I have been told a female interest of mine will be attending. Oh, great, another one of these. How do you handle this situation if you were in my shoes as possible? Is the price of possible love worth the chance of getting in trouble? I appreciate your time. Uh, you're taking your time to go over this during your next show. Oh no, of course, of course. Well, here's my uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you got someone you like, right? And they're going to this party where there's definitely going to be, you know, illegal activities, right? Underage drinking, you know, nowadays all the kids are going around smoking pot because they think it's cool. Idiots. So, of course, it might be underage drinking, underage drug use, you know. Uh, God knows what else. Oh, but, you know, there's someone there who, uh, you know, who, uh, say is an interest, right? What would I do? Mm -hmm. Depends how much this person really means to you. Mm -hmm. You could do one of two things. You could say, you know, the hell with it. I'm not going. I could find better. No, number two, uh, this one might be recommended. Always stay true to yourself, you know, and your morals, however many you have. If, you know, you figure, oh, let me get wasted, let me get high, whatever, well, then, you know, it's your decision. Uh, but if you wish to at least uh, retain some of your dignity, uh, you can go there, right? You can go there. Just come up with some excuse, right? Any excuse to not take part in, uh, I guess, the the festivities, right? They offer you a drink, just to say, no, I'm not interested. Right? They offer you something to smoke, say, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> they offer you meth, right? Say, no, no, hell no. And then you know, do what you got to do. Now, likewise, if you go, oh, you go over there, and she's like raving drunk, right? She's, oh, I love you guys so much. She's throwing up on the floor, whatever. You know, completely and totally wasted. You got to reconsider things, and you got to think. You know, is this the kind of person I would like to have as a girlfriend? You know, I mean, sure, she might be a character, but you know, just thinking. If if you say, yeah, sure, well, then go in still and do what you got to do. Otherwise, well, turn and walk out the door. At least that's what I would do. Of course, many people would say, no, what the hell are you talking about? Get wasted, do this and that, and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just giving them an honest answer. Also, please give me a shout-out. My name is Anthony. Well, gladly, Anthony. Uh, hope you uh, were at least able to consider my advice. And, uh... You know, I, I wish, you, uh, wish you luck. I mean, sure, this, this could all be a fabrication, right? But if it is real, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, and you have an official shout out from the report of the week you do hope all goes well hey report of the week 
I am planning to review the energy drink V, if you're able to get your hands on it. I don't think it's available in America, but it's my favorite energy drink here in Australia, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Do you buy any rare energy drinks online and get them shipped? If so, maybe you could buy some online. It's popular here in New Zealand, so it shouldn't be too hard to get on the internet. If not, I hope it gets on your hands. Get your hands on a can at some point. Good work. I'll definitely take a look. I'll definitely see what I can do. Uh, I got some good news for the Energy Crisis series. I was telling you a little while ago we had this, uh, not really a business deal, well, it kind of is, with a company I was trying to see if I could review the product. And last time it didn't seem like it would really go through, but uh, I can say at least as of now, uh, it has gone through and uh, apparently we'll get a case of energy drinks to, uh, to review. So the Energy Crisis series shall live on, hopefully. Assuming it finalizes and goes through, uh, then we'll get a case of energy drinks at some point and uh, we'll continue on. Could you please review Limon Pepino Gatorade at some point? My friend and I are having a, bag, uh, a bit of a back and forth about it. I normally don't review those sports drinks, but uh, you know, if, it, if it's convenient, I could, I could squeeze it in there, I suppose. Greetings. I'm sorry to hear about your dental problems. I had a somewhat similar experience with my own dentist. I had a cavity on one of the back molars, and it went quite deep, but the dentist was able to fill it in without problems. Eventually, my dentist retired, and I was forced to start seeing a new dentist. Well, this new dentist decided to take advantage of my insurance. He started to replace the metal fillings with tooth-colored composite resin. Yeah, that's what they're trying to use of me. For no reason. When I did this to my back molar, the dentist accidentally drilled too deep ugh, through the old filling, enamel, and pulp. She actually drilled right into my nerve. I had never felt more pain in my life. Oh, I feel you. Believe me, that dental pain. Ugh. They even give me the shot, you know, they numb it up, but you know they're going in deep when you can still feel the pain, you know, when uh, even when they give you the shot to try to numb it out. The dentist put a temporary filling in and rudely told me to make another appointment because now I was going to need a root canal. Yep. Hey, that's exactly what happened. Uh, that's what happened for me. They said uh, they put the temporary filling in. They said you're gonna need a, a, a root canal. Well, they didn't say you needed a root canal. They said uh, we'll look into that. I, wait a minute. What are they? No, I thought I was gonna need a root canal, but uh, they came back and they said, "All right, no, it's uh, it's looking good. Let's uh, let's replace it." Help with them. <sighs> yeah, needless to say, I was ticked off. Yeah, me too. Decided to wait a few weeks to see a different dentist. He was very friendly. Took a few x-rays and we learned that the tooth and temporary filling actually had four small roots instead of the normal uh, two size, uh, two normal sized ones. The root canal was going to be impossible. The previous dentist had actually killed my tooth. It was impossible to save it now and she knew it. She wanted me to go in, get a fake root canal, then an expensive crown on the tooth. Charge my insurance hundreds of dollars and then in a year or two I'd have to go back to get it extracted because the tooth would be dead. The dentist who ruined my tooth is currently in a multi, multi-million dollar legal battle with a bunch of in, different insurance companies and I hope they crush her. Moral of the story, find a dentist you are comfortable with, ask questions, and don't be afraid to tell a dentist who is being an asshole, no. That's sound advice, my friend. It certainly isn't. You know what, thank you for taking the time to type that up. Uh, when someone sends me a longer message, I always am sure to, to thank the person you know, for saying, yeah, well, you know, thanks for just taking the time to type it. That's the truth. There are many reasons why you would need to get a temporary film. The cavity might have been too damaged to take care of in one treatment. You might have also needed time for the tooth to heal. You might have also had a very deep cavity and the pulp was exposed during treatment. Otherwise, it's common and only normal procedure, not a waste of time or money. Well, that's a, a fine, you know, fine thing to say. The only problem, she stated the case. And uh, it was just a, an average, you know, oh, of course the tooth was very worn, right. And it was a deep cavity, but uh, they said, no, we could film it, fill it in no time. But they filled it with the temporary filling. Clearly, they're for the sole purpose, they didn't even tell me why they filled it with a temporary filling. So it was clearly just for the sole purpose of charging me money. But you know what, if it's too worn away, I'll say, just pull it out. <clears throat> hey there. I'm a big fan of your Running on Empty food reviews, and I was wondering if you could give a fellow pizza lover a shout-out for his birthday on your next Running on Empty review. 
would make my birthday to have a pizza guy such as yourself mention me for a brief moment on a video. You are reviewing some hot delicious meal. I understand if this isn't possible and I wouldn't be offended if you decide not to accept my request. Many thanks, Max. Yeah, the only problem with that is I got a, a backlog of videos, right? So I film the videos like, you know, nowadays a few days in advance. So I can't necessarily do everything on the spot. I wish I could, really. I do. I'll give you a, a birthday shout out right now, though. If it's the best I can do. Well, Max, thank you for being a viewer of my shows. I'm glad you, well, as many people in this world do, like pizza as well. I'm glad you're enjoying the shows. I'm glad you like the running on empty reviews. And, uh, you know, have a happy birthday. Really. You know? Birthdays are, uh, really an important time. I, mine isn't, but, uh, many are. You know? I really don't take my birthday too seriously, but, uh, it's, it's something, I guess. But, uh, you know, birthdays are important. They certainly are. But, uh, you know, have a happy birthday. Hope you have a good one. What is your name? Review Bra. Hey, I'm watching the ORW show 45 and I was wondering why you were in the hospital. I was wondering where your accent is from. Got a hint of Brooklyn in it, but I'm not sure. It's very unique. Well, anyways, I love your style and your videos and keep them coming. Well, thank you for your words. The accent is, uh... A rare combination. It's a. Uh, there are other people in this world who do have it, but uh, it's just. Uh, I guess not too often, right? Seen. It is nice. A combination of uh, a New York accent and also a little bit of a New England accent. So that's that's what that is. Dearest voice of the report of the week. Oh, this is a good one. Which scenario would you prefer to face if you had to in a fight to the death? One horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Perhaps you could... Perhaps the fight would be conducted with what we weaponry you realistically can produce. I.e. fist to cuffs, a towel, power tool perhaps. I look forward to your re response. Well, that's an interesting thing. Well, let's let's face it, a horse-sized duck, right, would be a difficult combatant, right? A horse-sized duck could easily, probably, I'm sure, it, it could just get those chompers, right, and kill you, I guess, and maybe crush you, squeeze you to death, whatever. Maybe even just use its brute force because of its sheer size. I mean, it could kill you, right? But it's only one foe you have to deal with. The hundred horse, duck-sized horses, well, they're small. You could easily dispatch them. But there's a lot of them, and it could wear you out, right? Let's say, let's say we had a hammer, right? You know, a, a carpenter's hammer. You could easily swing it around and, and eventually get rid of those horses. But I still wonder, alright, well, the horse-sized duck would be a challenge, but I think at least getting one of those, it would be a bloody battle, that's for sure. But uh, it might be easier to just focus your time on one foe rather than being attacked by a hundred small ones. Right, because a hundred duck-sized horses, oh yeah, they're small, but they could gang up on you. And uh, all they need to do, really, all a hundred of them, they could knock you down, and once you're down, you know, they could, I'm sure, while they're small, I'm sure they could eventually trample you to death, right? Or at least break a few ribs and then incapacitate you and uh, kill you that way. They could gang up on you. They might end up being more powerful than the, the horse-sized duck. I talked way too long about this, but uh, that's my decision. We're going to definitely go over an hour here. Well, right. we had a story to tell. We're not going to let that detract. You're getting free time now. It's no issue of mine. Hello again, Report of the Week. I'd just like to share a little bit of YouTube insight. Sometimes in the talk of your life, you mention offhand that it surprises you that people find your life interesting. As mundane as it might seem to yourself. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I literally couldn't agree more. Number one, I don't know how people watch these reviews. Number two, I don't know how people listen to these, but people do. Um, so I guess it's just an, an oddity. The thing about YouTube is that the people who produce the content are, at least as, if not more, interesting than the content. This goes for your stable viewership. Not only those who pass by, 
they leave because they don't like you with the content you do I like your attitude I, I, I have to say I do you just say it as it is so I do like the way you're writing this you just lay your cards on the table and you just say it as it is you're not sugarcoating anything right? just like me it's actually kind of a disgrace for me to compare anyone to me it's not really someone you want to compare yourself to the content is in a sense of an extension of you especially since you are so central to it what this amounts to is that you are an interesting person for those who stick around and you are you are different and you are distinct what is everyday to you is novelty to others therefore be yourself and disregard those who disapprove of you they are irrelevant to your channel so don't put yourself down that negative, subjective perspective is trash. Not you. I apologize for the length and can understand that this is too long to take up during the show. Oh no, no, don't don't worry about it. I felt like sharing this, as it saddens me saddens me to see you sadden yourself unnecessarily. You know, and uh, that's just, I guess how I sometimes look at this channel and look at myself. Really, thank you for your insight. And especially, once again, thank you for you know, writing to me like this, you know? Some people think, oh, yeah, I'll just write a sentence and that's enough. But, uh, you know, some people like you go uh, go above and beyond and, and type up a few paragraphs. And uh, just thank you for even just putting forth the effort and, uh, you know, writing in. Seriously. I really think you should do a suit with you. I mean, you have a lot of guys like me who have never worn a suit before. Yeah, maybe, maybe at some point. I could completely bash Brooks Brothers. I mean, completely and totally. Hey, man. You're going to review the Burger King chicken fries, not their back. They were just released yesterday and will be running through mid-November. The chicken fries. Fries, fries, fries. That's this one guy used to, uh, used to work at this restaurant. He would say, fries, fries, fries. He would say, fries instead of fries. So the Burger King chicken fries. Well... Got a Burger King somewhat near me. It's about as close as, you know, the Taco Bell, right? And I was only able to do one Taco Bell review. I figure one day, though, you know, listen, the chicken fries are actually a relatively easy item to review. You can get them to go, I'm sure. So I can get it taken care of, maybe one day. I've got time, at least. I'm, I thank you for giving me the date there, at least until mid-November. We'll see what we can squeeze in there. It'd be a nice break from all this pizza. And, uh, we'll see what we can do. My dear review bra, this is our friend again who uh, contacted me with the transformation to a, a blue jay or an orca. I guess he uh, responded. So now he's getting double air time, so good for him. My dear review bra, I was quite disgusted to hear the last message on your 45th VORW. This individual's speech patterns seem quite similar to my own. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know which, uh, I know what you're talking about. Quite similar to my own. And though imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, this child slash maggot's plagiaristic drivel is not worthy to exude from your lungs nor transmit to mine ears. He is an ant in the afterbirth, and we are immortal warriors. Brothers. That's in all caps. It's in all caps rage, people. I await your transformation with mirth. We shall ride into the night and steal the faces of children and fuse our fingertips together. We shall morph into one fleshy being, and all the ants will scatter. <clears throat> if this should occur again, I hope you check the name in the message to clarify that the words are that of larva and not my own. This scum is not worth talking about further. I shall not come out of retirement and collect another quiet client jeopardizing my transition for someone so small. Consider this disrespectful use of your channel forgotten orca man oh yeah I could understand that you would be absolutely furious in this you know I would be I would be bouncing off the walls here I would say we gotta find this guy and teach him a lesson <laughs> hey sorry to hear about your family member being hospitalized as you mentioned I'd like to hear or read the full story sure I'll give you the abridged version. 
That story about the replacement filling is ridiculous. Was it mercury or acrylic? I think it was, uh, I think it was once again acrylic filling. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, it was. I swear, you know how long they took giving me that filling? They took an hour and a half. And that's just way too long to be sitting in that dentist chair, getting that periodic pain. It took too long. And then the dentist just gets up and leaves the room for 15 minutes in the middle of the procedure. Probably went out for a smoke. Well, right, I can't blame anyone for smoking, but... And then you mentioned they left it in for a whole year. You have to wait 12 months nerv nervously anticipating the next session. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I feel you. Hey, review bra. I was wondering, since you are a fan of NASCAR, that I am, what is your take on the recent situation of Tony Stewart? Do you think he'll be criminally charged, and slash or does deserve to be? You know, Tony Stewart, for those of you who aren't big fans of NASCAR, <clears throat> he's kind of referred to almost as like the bully, you know, the tough guy, right? You don't mess with Tony Stewart, though people of course do, because he usually tries to seek, you know, retribution. Pretty sure he was the guy who threw his helmet at some guy's car and what have you, and I think he's gotten in numerous fights with people. So he's kind of like the tough guy of, of NASCAR. He's like the bully. Many years ago, back when I first got into NASCAR around 2007, 2006, there was this uh, driver who uh, went by the name of uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, and he was pretty much like the bully, you know, of the race. He would go. He, he didn't care what he did, you know. He would actually drive people off the road. He would, like, purposefully crash people. You know, I mean, that's, like, dirty, you know. It's not fair. Fair play, right? Well, this guy's kind of, I mean, not to such an extreme extent, but he's still, like, the bully in NASCAR. Personally, while I could understand, I'm sure he was mad at this guy, and, and vice versa. Well, I'm sure temper is flared. I don't think he would go as far as to purposefully try and kill the guy, you know, over a sport. I mean, of course, I'm sure it's happened. But I think he would at least try and keep himself together and not, not you know, actually drive and try and kill the person, right? So I think it was actually an accident. But will he be criminally charged? Well, that remains to be seen. He still might. But it just depends on, you know, what the, what the evidence shows. Right, I've seen the video. So we just gotta watch and see. Hello there. Really enjoy your uploads. I have a quick suggestion. Oh, this, uh, I think she's talking about the, uh, the BK chicken fries. I'm sure you heard that Burger King has brought back the trademark to chicken fries. Yep. I was really, really hoping to see a review of them soon. Thank you for your uploads. Well, thank you. And uh, now we have two suggestions. That means I kind of have to get, uh, get moving and actually get it taken care of. Because clearly if two people, two different people, uh, decide to speak up about it, there certainly is many more who would like to see a review of the chicken fries. So I'll have to get that in sometime. Quick question. I assume you frequently buy your energy drinks as singles from a convenience store. Do you generally wash or otherwise prepare the can before consuming? Regards. Depends. If you're talking about the ones to review... Oh yeah, I always check out the can. I always make sure. One of the important things that you have to think about the can is that I'm not doing anything to the outside of the can. Alright, yes, I'm holding the can. But the inside product, at least, should not be contaminated, okay? So, normally, you know, I, I always make sure I, you know, physically, or uh, I guess visually, examine the can first. Make sure there isn't any grievous, right, uh, issue with it. And assuming it's fine, well then, uh, we'll just review it as is. But if there's some sort of noticeable thing... Then I'll have to look deeper into it and try to help clean the can, or in some cases just completely get rid of it and buy a new one. If they're for me, if I'm just getting them personally, no, I don't, I don't look at the can. Of course, I understand. I, I always, once again, always look at the can, make sure there's not something on it, you know. It'd be a fecal matter or worse, right? But, uh, yeah, so I always look. Hi, review bra. Hello. When you buy frozen pizzas or any drinks at the store, do people know that you're going to review them? It depends. Most of the time, no. No one, no one really bats an eye. You know, 
I was actually kind of worried, you know, I figured since this channel is still growing, with no end in sight, I was actually kind of worried when I was at the, at the crowded hospital, someone was going to recognize me, and, uh, oh boy, but no one did, right? See, that's a good thing right now, is that I could still go places and not get recognized at every turn and corner, right? That's a good thing. But, uh, at some restaurants that I regularly visit, oh yeah, some of the guys there know I do the reviews. Uh, you know, so they're aware, and they'll even sometimes give me a discount, but I really don't like it when they give you a discount. I figure, well, what what makes me different from anyone else, you know? So what? I sit here and, and review the product. It doesn't make me special, you know? But, uh, you know, listen, when, when money's short, you don't complain, but I always still try and say, no, no, don't, don't do it. We got two more letters, assuming. They yeah, can come in. 3.30 a.m. Hey there. Hope all is well and whoever was and uh, whoever it was had to be in the hospital. Great VORW last night. Oh, thank you. I didn't think I did a good job, but uh, I'm glad for your insight and thoughts. I totally understand how you feel about the dentist. I too got jerked around with a few cavities in the past and it is truly a pain in the rear. Did you reschedule your appointment? Anyway, I hope you're doing well. See you in your next video. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't reschedule the next appointment. Number one, I had too much on my mind. And number two, I'm fed up with the dentist. I figured, well, I'm going to put it off for at least maybe two more weeks. Because number one, I got to not only physically prepare. Well, how are you going to physically prepare yourself for the dentist, you know? What a stupid thing to do. Well, I mean, I would, uh, you know, I'd you know, make sure I take extra good care of the, the teeth, right? As if they're going to notice any difference. I'm also to mentally prepare, gotta realize, you know, look at what you're getting yourself into. Gotta stay strong. And uh, you know, for for cavities for me, yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a pain for me too, trust me. When I was younger, alright, I've had cavities my entire life. And last year I guess it was because once again my habits, right? They told me I had a, a solid amount of cavities in my mouth mouth. But before that, I had uh, two cavities in my mouth many years ago. I'd say it was maybe like two thousand eight. I was a, you know, a few years younger. And, uh, oh my gosh. I don't know how I did it, but when they filled the cavities, I said, no, don't put any Novocaine in. I don't know how I couldn't... I couldn't deal with that right now. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't be able to deal with it. I always... They don't even ask anymore. They just give you the shot right in the Novocaine and let you sit for a while. And, uh, but I swear, I really, really don't want, want them to operate on that back tooth. I'm, I'm hoping that it's actually, and I know this sounds very irrational, but I'm just hoping it's it's too far gone and they could just get rid of it. Because I'd rather that they just pull it, oh yeah, it'll hurt a lot, it'll it'll hurt. But it'll be less of a, an issue for rather than to them, for them to dig this temporary filling ugh, out of there. And fill it in again, oh boy. I don't even like touching that tooth. But, uh, oh boy. Gotta dig that out, ugh. Gosh. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm gonna actually, well, maybe I'll, but, but, you know, it's it's really not something you want to eagerly, right, reschedule, but, you know, it's got to be done at some point. So I'm figuring maybe within the next two weeks. Of course, I'll, when we finally get a date down, I'll, I'll let all you know. But, oh boy. I guess the dentist doesn't care. I figure that as long as they're getting their money from, you know, as long as they're getting my money, I think, you know, no manage. figure after this procedure is done, getting a new dentist, someone better. Or maybe just an incompetent doctor, maybe maybe the person's gone, you know? Hi, one question, one comment. Question, why don't you ever talk about girls in the VORW show? I, it's just not a topic, and then people try to ask about it, and I, I think it's because people have seen from the recent questions, uh, well, some would say the absolute pathetic nature, right, uh, of my lifestyle, and uh, now they try to keep bringing up the subject. I'm not gonna, you know, anyone who asks about it, you know, I don't think I'm gonna talk about it, or maybe I will, but maybe a little vaguely. But you know, I, don't, I just don't want it to be the topic of these shows. You know, I figure, why do you need to? Some people feel a need, right? To make literally every single everyday activities have to do deal with romance and sex and all this BS. 
And I figure, you know, can't you just go on and, and not talk about it? You know? Don't let it take up your entire life. So. Comment. Drinking too many energy drinks can lead to kidney stones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Likewise, though, it's not the only thing I drink. I completely balance it out with many, many glasses of water. I'd say I drink between, you know, five and, and nine glasses of water each and every day uh, compared to maybe one energy drink, if even. So clearly it's it's so diluted with water, I don't think it's really that big of a problem. But if I do, well, then that's my that's what I get for doing it. But otherwise, well... Oh, and finally, one last one. This is in the spam folder because he uh, gave me a link. Hey, Rep. Bra. You mentioned the new storyteller and similar weird channels in VOIW 45. You might be interested in this. Oh, yeah, this man. Yep, yep. I actually discovered his channel at the same time, but I didn't think about uh, uh, talking about it. Yeah, this guy is, uh, is a legend. He, uh, the channel is called Smokers of Cigars and Pipes. That's S-M-O-K-E-R-S-O-F-C-I-G-A-R-S-P-I-P-E-S. -E -E so, Smokers of Cigars and Pipes. And, uh, it's an older gentleman. No, he's not wearing formal attire or anything. He's just there, uh, I guess in like a, a, a t-shirt and stuff. Oh, I guess a button down. And all he does is just smoke a pipe or a cigar. And he, I mean, he power smokes it, you know? <clears throat> I mean, literally, check this out. Go to his channel and just watch the first one. <clears throat> and he's there with his pipe. Just making assorted noises, and he's just power smoking the thing. And there's another video of his where he's smoking a cigar. I got you know, I don't smoke, but at least I know you're supposed to at least try to enjoy a cigar if you do smoke them regularly. You know, you're supposed to take like at least some good time doing it. And here he is, cigar smoking with white T-shirt, Scotland shirt, and music of Tango. Adios, Arabel. That's a video title. He always says what he's wearing, also. Yeah, this old music playing, and he just power smokes this cigar. He literally doesn't, I don't even think he inhales it at all. He literally just power smokes the thing. Like it's, I, I don't know. If you watch that, I mean, he's just. He's literally just constantly exhaling smoke. Like, literally, perpetually. And the audio isn't so good either. <laughs> He's just constantly exhaling smoke. And uh, what makes this guy unusual... Oh, sure, it's just some guy smoking, right? Is that he has about 6,000 videos of him doing only this. So, I mean, that's really something that... That's all he does. He just smokes. I guess. And he has 6,000 videos of it. He also makes a case that uh, I think it's his wife died. So maybe, I don't know if he's just doing that to try to, to cope with it. Or uh, maybe it did something to him. Or... Uh, Maybe he's got some sort of fetish. Who knows, but you know, let him keep doing what he's doing. He hasn't made a video in two months, whereas he was regularly uploading multiple videos every day, from what I saw. You know, 6,000 videos up in just a few years. Clearly, it's got to be more than, than one per day. So I guess every time he just goes for a smoke, I guess he just films it. But, uh... You know... Last video was uploaded two months ago, so at first I thought, well, I guess all the smoking finally caught up with him. But uh, no, he said, no, I'm just taking, I'm taking break. He always, you could tell he doesn't really speak English, because uh, he finishes off every message with, uh, your friend of Argentine. Yes, that means, like, you're an Argentinian friend, or it's a formal way of saying it. I'm assuming he puts the messages through a translator. I'm guessing he's from Argentina. Maybe not. That's possible. Or Argentina, I don't know if that's a place. Anyways, we took up an hour and 20 minutes, well, about an hour and 14 minutes of this show. Well, I'm sorry I wasted your time with that story earlier. Hope you got something out of it. Other than that, uh, thank you for listening. This is VOW, the voice of the Report of the Week, and this is your host, the Report of the Week. Once again, let your voice be heard. Questions? Comments? Suggestions? Just want to talk? Feel free to send me a message. And uh, I'll gladly respond to it. Gladly will. At the beginning of each and every show. 
However, if your message, if you want it to be responded to personally, I will work very best to get a personal reply out within hopefully a matter of hours, but if it if means allow, a matter of days, but a reply will be sent out. Well, thank you for listening, and I'll see you later. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing off.